When We Die, Part 3. All right, so in Numbers 16, 32, and 33, the sons of Korah went alive into hell. So let's read that. Numbers 16, 32, And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up in their houses. And all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. Korah here is the number 7141, and it means the third son of Esau, a duke of Edom, the seed line of Cain. Now let's read, and again, I'm going to start breaking down more of Judges, Joshua, 1st, 2nd Kings, on all of the wars and what's really going on here, uh, because where I'm going with this whole thing about when we die, hell being real, because there's so much, I guess I would say so many lies around this, and I don't want to see a soul there simply out of ignorance. I just don't want to see that happen. So we're going to really be breaking this down over the next few days. Again, number 16, verse 33. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Now the pit here is number 7585, and that means Sheol, the underworld. When you look at the concordance, it says Sheol, the underworld, the pit, the bottomless pit, the deep, the abyss, and the nether regions, or the nether world. And so um, it's really important that we get a grasp on this so that you can save some of your Laodicean friends that just think, because the biggest thing today is universalism, or it's just a state of mind. There's way too many teachings out there on that very lie. Why would you want to spend eternity in outer darkness, wailing and gnashing of teeth? The fact of hell is throughout the Bible, and it's, it's I mean, throughout. It's not scattered. It's not sparse. It's not here or there. That's why I'm going to do as many videos as is needed on this fact. Now, the common themes of literally, there's over 400, over 450 religions, on the main theme, I've talked about this already, universalism, that says that we will all be saved no matter what. Jesus talks explicitly that this is simply not true. There is only one way to Father God, and it's through his Son, by having a personal relationship with Jesus, with following his commandments. It's repeated over and over. I'm just going to read John 14, 6 here. You should know this one by heart. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now I know how many teachers want to tell you differently. Fact is the fact. You're either going to stick to sound biblical doctrine or you're going to end up in hell. Why let that happen? It's, it's that simple. It sounds harsh. No one will say it out there because you're not going to follow people who tell you that sort of thing. And since everybody needs a follower, uh, with S, plural, uh, you're listening to lies. Okay. If you're not going to believe me, <laughs> if, you're not going to if you're not going to believe the Bible, how about the demons? Now, I've told you over and over in so many of my videos how intelligent demons are. Demons are are three five maybe a thousand times more intelligent than humans will ever be humans will never reach the level of intelligence and the level of supernatural capabilities that demons have always had they are supernatural creatures way stronger way smarter and outnumber you by a minimum six thousand to one one person can have six thousand demons in him at one time it's called a legion Look it up. All right, so how about you, you take the devil's words for it? All right, take the demon's word for it. It's so easy to say you don't believe, but the real world, 
the true nature of the supernatural that surrounds, um, you know, us. The supernatural is around us 24-7. It's around us or it's in us. And if it's not in you yet, it's waiting patiently for that permission to inhabit. All right, because it starts grooming your kids. They're really after the little one. And that grooming starts day one. Just watch a TV show on CBS called Evil. It's now in its fourth season. It's completely and totally spelled out for you. It's on TV, and the show is meant for kids. No, it's not a cartoon. Watch it. Just parents, watch it without your kids, and teach your kids about the grooming that is happening with the toys, the video games, and TV shows, be it cartoons or not. Now, the demons... They believe in Jesus. Not only that, they know his name and exactly who he is and the power that he has. And the zero, the zero power that they have. And they also know appointed times. They know when their time is coming. And they make it clear to Jesus about that they know their appointed time. Jesus has arrived on the scene too soon, at least for their demise. It's all right there in the Bible. So let's just take a look at some of it. Can't go through all of it, but here's some. This is just to hopefully inspire you to get into the Bible and read and study it for yourself. Right? There's 54 verses in just hell alone. In just hell. Take your time and go through all 54 of those verses. All right? Right now we're going to look at James 2, 19. Thou believest that there is one God... Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Matthew 8, 29. Behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to, to, to torment us before our time? I, I just want to pause right here and say, The devils, the demons, all right, the unclean spirits, they actually knew he was the son of God, but none of the Jews did. None, none of the Pharisees or Sadducees did. None of them would, would recognize, even though it's prophesied in Daniel, down to the very day that he would arrive in Jerusalem, that was prophesied in Daniel. They know that prophecy, and yet they, would, they were not as smart as the demons. So in case you're smarter than a demon... The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the most religious and educated of the day, could not recognize Jesus as the Son of God, but the demons did. You might want to reread that. Write that down on your refrigerator. All right, Matthew 8, 29. That's a good one. Let's move on. The demons also know who the righteous people are, right? In Acts 19, 15. But the evil spirit answered them, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I recognize. But who are you? Do you see the intelligence there? We're told that for a reason. 1 John 3, 8. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. It's amazing. Mark 1. I'm going to read 23 to 28. In this little scene that's happening in the synagogue. And there was in their synagogue a man with unclean spirits. And he cried out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? You have come to destroy us. I know you who thou art, the Holy One of God. The demons, the unclean spirit in that man in the synagogue knew him. But no one else in the synagogue did. Unbelievable. Again, Mark 1, 25. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all of the region around about Galilee. 
Matthew 8, 29. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? I think I already reread that, but let me let me uh, skip down. I didn't finish with Mark yet. Because the scriptures a lot of times repeat themselves. Anyway, so in, in Mark 1, verse 30, and there was a... And there was a good way off from them and a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. Even the demons here was basically asking, and you can read that account in Luke, not to go to the pit. Because what's in the bottomless pit that's going to be opened up during the times of the tribulation, that's way worse. That's way where even the demons are dreading going to the bottomless pit, to hell, and finally their final destination, the lake of fire. You guys know 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now you may only have today, right? You don't know when you're going to die. You may only have today today is the day of your salvation we already read that story in luke 16 remember that with the rich man and lazarus so let's look at the mini myths the church or whatever teachings you're going by whatever you want whatever religion you want to call it doesn't matter let's look at the top uh i guess i would say myths or stories or understanding about hell one that it is a myth or it's a state of mind, or that hell is on earth, or there is total annihilation, you're just gone when you die, or your soul goes to sleep. And of course, I've already talked about universalism, where everyone would just be saved. And then the Catholics have their uh, favorite lie about purgatory. I'm not, none, none of this is sound doctrine, okay? I, I don't care what your religion is, how many people follow your religion, whatever, whatever it is, nothing about Anything I just said is sound doctrine. It just isn't. It, it makes you feel good because that is how the devil tempts you. He tells you and you follow. You, you, you put into scripture what you want to make you feel good. You, put, you add to scripture, such as the, the stupidity of purgatory, you add something to scripture in order for you to live life the way you want to live life. Sin, sin, and sin again. Confess be absolved by some man you like your sins going to be absolved by a man <laughs> everything about that is is beyond it's beyond um I, I don't want to use language but it's it's beyond i guess i would say it's beyond sound doctrine okay it's it's not real it's not sound it's unbiblical no matter how many teachings and religions and buildings you need to erect, and followers you need, and money that you have, none of it's sound. All right, on the, on the myth part, there's so many verses I can read, I have to narrow it down, right? On the myth, go and please read 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 to 9. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can't be adding the scripture to suit your way of life. Verse 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So, there's, there's nothing mythological about that. It's simple truth. Now, for those who say it's in your head, right? Hell is just a state of mind. This one's actually funny. Because I, I was so long in the New Age world and I worked as a psychic and I know how much everybody wants to go to a psychic and get their Akashic records read. So they believe in the Akashic record, right? That, what is the Akashic record? It's your book of life. Now, of course, they believe it's all of your lives because, you know, most of the world believes they've had 
many, many, many lifetimes, demons convince you of that. So I'm going to wrap up part three with this one. Because it really is. People, every single day on planet Earth, they spend probably in the multi-millions of dollars to get a psychic, a medium, an Akashic reader, whatever they call themselves, to tell them all about their many, many lifetimes and their whole Akashic record book of life. They believe that, but they don't believe in hell. I'm going to read Revelation 20. 14 to 15 and we'll end part three revelation 20 14 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire so if you believe in the book of life and you need to continue to get your readings you, you better brush up on hell just saying Potter's done.